I'm Amy from Doodle Dog Designs. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to make some primitive watermelon slices for decorating with this summer. To make the pattern, I looked around the house for something that was about the right size. I found this wooden box that I haven't painted yet. It is about five by seven. So I'm going to use it as a pattern for drawing the, the rounded parts of the watermelon. So I'm going to use this part of it here, the long part, to make a larger watermelon slice. And then I'm going to use it the other way to make more of a tr uh, triangle type watermelon slice. I'm just using a piece of tissue paper. I use tissue paper a lot to make patterns. It's economical and it's pretty thin, so it's easy to make a pattern with it. Then for this watermelon slice, I'm going to come up in the middle of it. I want it to be about five inches or so tall, and I want the, I'm going to need to add seam allowances. So I'm going to go up about five and a half inches, kind of eyeball where the middle is. And then I will put a mark here, and then I'm going to draw lines to connect from the end of my arc here on, and then draw another line to connect it and that will be the watermelon wedge and then for this watermelon slice I'm going to bring it up just a little bit higher and then I'm going to go straight across and leave an opening here and then I'm going to make a cutout for a bite. So it looks like it has a bite out of the watermelon. I'm using a natural colored muslin fabric. I like to use a cheap fabric for this type of project because I am going to be painting the fabric and covering it up so there's no point in using a super high quality or a quilting cotton. So I'm just going to put the pattern on a doubled over piece of muslin and pin it down and then I will cut it out. I'm going to be making two of the these slices. So I've cut out four of these and I'm just going to make one of this type and so I'm just going to cut out two of these now I'm going to take these to the sewing machine and I'm going to sew a quarter inch seam all the way around and I'll leave an opening for turning and stuffing You can see here, I just left a small opening for turning right here, and I've sewn all the way, rest of the way around. I'm going to clip these corners here, the bottom corner, and then the side. That'll make turning easier. And then along this curved edge, I'm just going to make little snips of the fabric. I'm going to just trim in the seam allowance and get fairly close to the stitching, but not into it. I don't want to cut the stitching. And again, this just helps the seam lay smoother when you turn it. Again, trimming off the bulky outer corners and then I'm going to clip the curves. Now I'm ready to turn pieces. So I'm going to turn them right side out. 
So the seam allowance is on the inside. I do have this stick that came with a bag of stuffing that I got one time. It's very helpful for poking the corners out. The next thing I'm going to do is press each of these pieces. And I'm just going to use some fiber fill stuffing and I'm going to stuff each of the watermelon slices. Once I get it firmly stuffed, I'm going to sew up the opening. I didn't get this next part recorded, but I went ahead and I took a pencil and I drew a line on here where I want to paint the green part of the watermelon when I'm using forest green apple barrel craft paint. And I actually got it painted on here where I painted the lines and I don't feel like it's really up far enough on the bottom. So I'm going to add a little bit more green paint here. The green paint is dry, so now I'm going to paint a real thin line of white paint. If I get too wide, I can always go over it with the red later. Make sure that this line is touching the green. You don't want to leave any gaps between the green and the white. Now I'm going to paint the red of the watermelons. I'm using this bright red apple barrel color. The paint is all dry. I did come back in and touch up some of the colors a little bit. I needed a second coat and a few spots. And now I'm going to use some black paint and a small paintbrush. And I'm going to draw a teardrop shape, like a raindrop, for the seeds. I'm going to do one on either side and then I'll have a better idea of how many I want to put on their total. Looks like I probably want to do about five of them.
I do want to let these dry before I flip them over and do the seeds on the opposite side. Just show you the difference here. You could leave just three or the five or some other combination. You could also add more as a second layer. The paint is dry on the first side now, so I'm going to flip them over and paint the seeds on the back side. Of these two, I really like this better, so I'm going to paint both of the back sides like this one. Now I'm going to add a little bit of this antique wax around the edges to just give it a distressed look. I'm going to use it very sparingly. Notice I'm, after I put some on the rag, I'm getting most of it off along the edges of the watermelon and then rubbing it around the, on the white part. If you rub it around on the white part first, it can get too dark. Here's the two, one with the wax and one without the wax. And see, so it just kind of tones it down a little bit and gives it more of an aged look see in this spot here I got a little bit too much wax I will just use that on the back side I'll put, turn it over and have the watermelon go in the other direction so that isn't visible I put some Spanish moss in this wooden bowl and then I put the watermelon slices on top I feel like it just needs a little bit more so I took this watermelon graphic. It is available in my Etsy printable shop. It comes as an eight by 10 and I shrunk it down to three inches wide. And then I printed it and then I tore the edges so it would not be sharp, crisp edges. And now I've got some brown ink pad. I'm going to ink the edges to grunge it up just a little bit. It's already got grunge to it, but I'm just adding a little bit more. So it looks like it's been out in the garden. Then I'm going to take some craft paper. So this is about three by almost four. So I cut a piece that is four by five and it is too big, but I want to tear it also. So I'm just going to fold the edges over just a little bit and then tear it so it will have a a worn look to the paper. My craft paper was kind of curled up so I had to press it with the iron to get it to flatten. I'm going to take the watermelon label and I'm going to use some stick glue to glue it down. And then I'm going 
to add a little bit more of the ink. So it has a grungy look on the paper, on this background as well. I hope you found that helpful. Be sure to click the like button and subscribe below. I'll see you next time. Bye.